Welcome back to the channel everybody. Today we're going to be putting a new carburetor on the Trailfire 340. We're having some problems with it running. I've tried cleaning this thing a couple times, but you know it's a 1979. You know it's hard to tell what kind of cruds build up inside of it. I just can't get it clean and it won't run past half throttle. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm going to install a brand new one I just bought off Amazon and we're gonna see how it runs. So sit back and enjoy, here we go. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pinch off this fuel line. Take the throttle cable out. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the screw loose on the boot so I can pull this other carburetor out of here. Before I go switch the stuff over, I'm going to make sure that the new carburetor fits inside of this hole. It should. I think it's a 44 uh, millimeter. So looks like it'll fit. So that's good. Put that on down. And then I'm going to loosen this clamp. Get it to slide over. And just crank it down to make it tight. Now this carburetor should be preset. Um, I didn't open it to check the jets or anything, but I'm sure that they're all preset factory. I'm not sure where the idle is. I'm not going to adjust it. I'm just going to try to start it like it is and then adjust it afterwards. Because if it's pre-tuned, I really don't want to deal with throwing it out of whack. Now I think this drain goes down here and just tucks down underneath stuff. Pretty sure. Just needs to flow down there in case it overfills. Same as this one, it just needs to tuck down. Now I did try putting a new fuel pump on this and there's a previous video of me trying to get it started and the only way it would start is if I held the full throttle down and boy it lifted the skis off the ground pretty good. That almost threw me off the back so I know it'll run. I know it has compression and everything. It's just kind of a pain to get it started and to keep it running. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to assemble this throttle. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and reuse the same top because it threads into the carburetor just fine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this needle in. Um, I'm going to pull this tab out. So from the factory it gets set straight in the middle. Two slots above and two slots below. And then this will slide down here for now. That way I can still get the throttle cable through that groove there. So I'll try to do this so you can see. So you can see it right there. So you slide the cable in this hole and then just slide it over and then the rim of it will get caught up in this to make sure it locks in place so you can kind of see it from this side and then what you have to do to make sure it doesn't slide out you have to get your screwdriver Hold on, let me get in here and then you have to 
slide this over to lock it in place. Just like that, and that tab goes down right there. So you can kind of see it through here, that tab. So you can just put it in and hopefully this thing will fire up. So the jet or the inlet is down there. So this side goes straight down. Now, sometimes these will cross thread it's a very fine thread you just have to make sure you go real slow and it should not have any kind of resistance so it should go on pretty easy and just crank it hand tight you didn't make it too tight and then uh, you do have to make sure your your carburetor is relatively balanced as far as level um, the floats inside are set. You don't want the bowl to be crooked. You want it to be completely flat. So there's a little tab on the back here. And I just lined that up with a mark that I put on my hose clamp. That way I know it's exactly parallel. Put on the choke, turn on the gas, and wish me luck. Hopefully I don't pull this many times. Well, it starts. I must say that kind of scared me. <laughs> it's set way too high on the idle. So now I have to figure out which direction to turn this thing to make sure it doesn't you know, fly out into the garage. Let's try again. Well, she runs like a deer, so not too bad for a 79 snowmobile. I always keep it in the garage to keep it nice and protected from the elements, and it's still in pretty good condition. All right, as always, if you guys like this video, make sure you guys do give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below and tell me what you think, and share the video, and make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. And until next time, this is the easy way to do things. We'll see ya.